Hey guys, Mike with Kitney Greasy Garage. Inside the shop, working on the 59 Fairlane today. So, work, I'm on the AC compressor, and in one of my other videos, I got the other mounts made, and I had made one mount for this side. Um, I've been doing other things, so I just couldn't get back to this part of the project. And I just wasn't happy with the way that other mount turned out. I, I got some good compliments on it, but it just wasn't, I wasn't happy with it. And I'm the designer, engineer, and builder of this project, so I'm going to change it. So, I have to connect this to these studs that stick out. I'm using the, the back end of the uh, radiator bolts, just like I did on the other end. Easy enough to use. So... I got out a pad of paper and a ruler and and uh, drew and drew and drew until I came up with what I like and um, well quite honestly I hope you do too but at the same time that's what it's getting so ignore my messy shop but so what I did is I made up this template Okay, we'll take the template and we'll place it on there, and that's what we're gonna have. Okay, so I have a like four by four sheet of 22 gauge, which is great for metal working. You know, it's not super thick. I don't need to make this mounting plate or bracket out of a uh, quarter inch plate or anything you know it's just a light aluminum condenser so what I did is like any sheet metal that sits out gets rust I just sanded it off real quick with the DA and put a light light coat of some silver paint on here or aluminum paint and the only reason I did that is so that when I lay my template on and scribe, I'll use a scribe to trace it, then my lines will show up. Um, what I'm gonna do is uh, I think I'm gonna use a little bit of some glue that I have, some light glue, and just put a couple spots on this template and then lay it on the metal where it's gonna go. That way, there's, you know, it doesn't move or anything like that. Just This is just light uh, poster board. And I don't want it to move and screw up my line. So, that's where I think we'll start. So, let me get you guys set up on a tripod here. And we'll get the glue and get this thing stuck. Alright guys, so, we've, uh, Got the template laid out here, and this is the this end and this side are the factory edges when the metal was made. So I know there's it's I've already checked it with a square, a square corner. So that's the corner I'm going to start with. Um, all I'm going to use because that's what I have is just a little uh, tight bond. I don't know if it's going to squeeze out or not, but we'll find out. Oh yeah. So I'm just going to put a couple drops along it. I don't like to ruin my templates. I like to save them. Sometimes you can reuse them for other projects or even modify them and use them, you know, rather than cutting it out again. Okay. So, I'm no professional at this, this is just how I like to do things. Oh, spread it out just a hair. Alright. And 
and I'm not worried about getting the glue back off of the, the metal because I can, uh, before I cut it out, uh, I'll sand it again. Okay. So, I don't know if this is going to work or not, but we'll give it a try. Yeah, it looks like it's going to hold. So, I've just got it squared up on the edges. It's flush down here, flush over here, flush along this edge. So, I'll let this dry and then we'll bring you guys back. Alright guys, so I've got our glue dry, holding it down. Sorry my little vice is in the way, but uh, I realized after the fact that I did still have some spray adhesive, which I could have used, like upholstery spray adhesive. That works pretty good. You just spray your pattern, lay it on your metal. But I find that when I've used that stuff in the past, that my patterns get ruined. And like I said, I kind of like to save them in case for some reason I have to redo this. So <clears throat> the other thing, I use these and I recommend you go get some. eBay, um, oh, Amazon. All it is is a scribe. Looks like a pencil kind of. Even got a little pocket thing, a little clip on it. It's a real sharp point. They're carbide. And they're for scratching lines on metal or plastic or whatever. But I like these because it leaves a real fine line. So, like when you use a Sharpie or something, the line's pretty wide. And it's, you can, it's tougher to get an exact center with a wider point. With this, you draw your line, you bring another line across. Uh, it's pretty exact. So, I, I think I got two of these for $10 on eBay. Um, but, you know, they're really handy to have. You can use them for all kinds of things. So, with our light coat of paint on our metal, the scribe will show up really well. So, I'll go ahead and I'm just going to... You don't have to put a lot of pressure. Because again, we got that paint on there. That glue that I put down is really helping hold the pattern. And you use it just like you would a pencil. Get all the off my. Can't put it there, but that's why you go back over, you take a quick look. Everything looks pretty good. I can, I can uh, get the gist of what I'm trying to do. Mainly, you'll, you'll use the scribe lines when we go to cut this out. So, anyway, we'll go ahead and pull our uh, pattern up. 
if we're gonna glue it too good. No, that's fine. Okay, get that out of the way. And I don't know how well, <coughs> well, you obviously can see the the glue, but you can, if, if the camera will show it, the scribe lines. It just looks like a real fine pencil tip. So, now that's my basic shape. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wipe the glue off of here. And then we'll measure it out. I have decided that I'm going to bead roll this. So, I had somebody in the comments say I should do the dimple dies. Uh, I'm kind of torn both ways, but trying to lay out the dimple die so that the spacing looks right. I just couldn't find a spacing that I was happy with. Um, and either dimple dies or uh, bead roll will add strength so that the panel doesn't flex. And you can see it. It's called oil canning. With the bead in there, it makes it really stiff and solid so so I'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up and uh, when I bring you guys back we'll lay out the lines for the bead rolling be right back all right guys well I went ahead and laid out all my lines um, and I did them in pencil so what these lines are for is where I want my bead rolls the blue lines are where to stop and I mark with an arrow, it's just, that's how I lay it out, and uh, you do it any way you want, but um, anyway, uh, I, I traced over my scribe lines with the pencil, just they're a little bit more visible where I need them to be, um, got everything else measured out, laid out, so what we'll have, let's see if you guys can see this, Because in between each line, it's divided in half, and that's there will be a bead roll in each one. Uh, the other reason for leaving it as a whole piece is that when you bead roll, it twists the metal and bends it and moves it around as a whole sheet. It keeps it from distorting, and uh, it just seems to work better. So the next thing is I'll get the bead roller set up and I just used a, a basic Eastwood, I think it's an 11 inch bead roller, uh, came with a bunch of dies, you can buy all kinds of dies, you can make dies on a lathe, but I used what this came with, I'm pretty happy with it so far, so let me get that set up, I'll get you guys moved around and we'll roll some beads. Alright guys, we got our panel, got our Eastwood bead roller set up here. Obviously our panel. So the first thing we'll do is you have some adjustments here. If you've never wanted, used one of these, I'm probably not the right one to teach you. But you can just watch how I do it. And again, I'm no expert. So I'll just get it. Set up on my lines. I try to run the center of the bead, obviously, on the center of my line. start point I got a stop point on each end of the sheet and I've just run this down so the metal is touching and this is where you got to count 
how many turns you go on each bead so that uh, it'll every bead works out the same so uh, make sure okay everything's right here once you start bead rolling you're stuck with the results so we'll go half three quarters one full turn. Okay. Let's just turn the handle. Follow your lines. And again, I'm no professional. tricky part is to roll the bead far enough. Oh yeah, it looks good. Okay. Roll it back along it. I like to just pass over everything. Go back over there to kind of start in the middle. Okay. Now, I want to go a little bit deeper. So we'll go a quarter turn, so a turn and a quarter total. start point okay once you get a bead rolled in there just it rolls pretty uh, pretty steady all right now so we have a turn and a quarter Pull that off. There's our first bead. I'm off just a little bit, but you know, I'm not a professional. Here's what the other side looks like it's raised. Get a set here on the next one. Okay, go uh, full turn. Yeah. Hold on, for the horse here. Okay. Okay, now we'll go full turn. Roll, roll, roll. I'm rolling it till it centers on the center of the shaft. That's that's how I learned to do it. Go back the other way. Up there. Okay. And go quarter turn more. Center. Okay. Back 
back it up here just to make sure. Okay. Roll back. So all I'm doing now is making sure that I went far enough. Okay. Loosen, loosen. Let's see if I can get the light to show. I'll get this one done. There it is. That's straighter. Once you start doing this, you really get the hang of it. Feeling the beads to make sure they're similar depths. Okay, so there's that one. Got that off. And I'm sure some of you are, are far more professional at this than I am. But it's starting to come on. You can see it in the camera there. I got one more to do right here. These things only have a, so much of a depth, and I didn't buy the huge one because I don't. I'm not going to do huge panels. Just little brackets and pieces and parts. Okay. Full turn. And the same thing. You can do curves and all kinds of stuff with this. It's just a matter of following whatever lines you draw. Okay, a little too far, but hey. Oh well. There's another quarter turn. Eventually I'll weld T-handles on all this stuff, just to make it easier, but... Well, there you go. And you can see, if you look, maybe on that edge, a little bit of distortion in the metal. A little bit of twist this way. But had I not left this as a whole piece, it would have been far worse. 
So, next thing to do is cut it out. So, I'm going to probably use a die grinder with a cutoff disc. Um, but to me, it seems to be the, the best way. So, I'll uh, get it cut out. You guys have seen somebody cut metal before. You don't need to watch me do it. And I'll bring you guys back when I'm at that point. Alright guys, well, got it all cut out. Just sitting in there. All that's left to do is drill the holes. And give it some paint. Turned out pretty decent. I'll pull it out. Put the bead roll in it. Not perfect, but, you know, that's how you learn. But, uh, this is the bead roller, just the Eastwood Elite. You can see how deep the, the throat is on it. Got a whole bunch of different dies. I'm pretty happy with it. I don't need a big one. Um, if bead rolling is something you're interested in, this is a, a great little bead roller. Uh, I, I got this one on eBay from Eastwood. Well, from eBay, it was sold by Eastwood, and it was a little bit cheaper than going directly through them. For some reason, I don't know why. But uh, I think it was like $150, $180. Not horrible for what it what all it'll do. I mainly just wanted it for these standard type beads, but it does all kinds of other stuff. Um, I've got that. So I cut these out of the uh, instructions. You can see all the different things it'll do. You can pause your. YouTube and look closer, but these are the different dies that it comes with. I just put that on a piece of board and saved it so I know which dies to grab that match. So, anyway, um, that's the mount for that, and that's how I made it. I'm not sure if I'm going to put it this way. Or uh, raised rib out yet, but um, I gotta take a a little file and f and finish up the corners in a few spots. But all in all, pretty well done. So a little bit of I use files a lot just because I can uh, you know m finish metal better. Um, you know, I, I got the opportunity to apprentice under a couple of old gunsmiths with years and years and years of experience, and it taught me metalworking techniques, you know, old school stuff, draw filing, uh, stuff like that. So that's why I use files, but that's a personal preference. But realistically, uh, the fanciest tool on this is the bead roller. Uh, Four and a half inch grinder, death wheel, a couple files, and some sand, uh, sanding discs on a uh, die grinder. So, anyway, guys, that's enough out of me. It's probably a long enough video at this point, but I just want to show you guys how I go about making little brackets and stuff. And uh, again, questions or comments, leave them down below. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please do and ring that bell for notifications. Uh, and like and share, you know, all that stuff's free, doesn't cost you a penny, really helps out the channel, helps the channel grow. And uh, I want to say welcome to the new subscribers, shout out to Ole's Garage, and uh, I Spider Garage, oh, who else, uh, Bear Rose Garage, I see he subscribed, welcome, and I'm sure I'm missing somebody, but Anyway, um, go watch those three channels. They all, they all put out good content. 
Ole's building a 55 Fairlane. I'm working on a 59, so we kind of clicked together on the Fairlane thing. But uh, anyway, guys, that's enough out of me. It's lunchtime. And uh, stay greasy, my friends.